everybody. Hug. Hanukkah. So may act to you. Um, and I'm going to say that to my husband as he is in Jerusalem. Uh, I love you, Noam, and I miss you so bad. But soon we'll be together. Um, Noam is looking for a dwelling place for us. And so it's going to be an amazing journey, how the Lord always does with us. It's an amazing journey. And it's a journey of faith. It's just a journey of faith. And I love this journey, even though it's, it's kind of like Abraham. Okay, where are you going to lead us? But we know he has the exact spot for us to live. So I'm just blessing you, Noam Cohen, and I miss you so much. But what is tonight? Tonight, I'm really going to go there pretty deep. Um, everybody usually talks about the oil, which is great. It's about the lampstand. I like to talk about the lampstand. Uh, I like to talk about Yeshua, the lampstand, in the holy place. Um, as you can see, it, this is the Shamash candle uh, here and behind me. And we've lit two candles. Tonight was the second lighting. Now, why is the second lighting so important to the Cohen family? Because the second lighting represents covenant. And Yeshua made a covenant with us. But so many people think it's only Yeshua's way of doing it to us. But it's our covenant with him. It's an exchange. We say he gives us his life, but we also in turn give him our lives. So it's it's a covenant bought by his blood. And so when we're in covenant, um, this means that we're in covenant with the Holy One of Israel. He is called the Holy One of Israel. Um, he is called the Ancient of Days. He is called the Light of the World. He is called the Great I Am. He in oh by the way, I want to tell you this is one, the Shamas servant, it's Echad. We serve one God, and when we like to say Echad, it means Abba and the Son and the Ruach HaKadosh, um, out of one comes three. So this is such a good learning tool for all of us that are grafted in. Now, you may say to me, this is a Jewish thing. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Actually, no, this is a believer's thing because Yeshua came for, for God to so love the world. For God to so love the world. And because we're grafted in, if you're a Gentile, you're grafted in as wild olive branch into the tree of life, into the olive tree, which represents Israel. Because now we're a part of the commonwealth of Israel. We're a part of his kingdom where he will reign as king. You know, on his execution stake, it said King of the Jews. Isn't that amazing? Uh, and nobody could take the sign down. Even though the Pharisee says, no, no, take it down. But he is that. So when we come out of Egypt, um, we come out because we see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob displaying his glory. And the, the Egyptians saw that the God of Israel was more powerful than all the thousands of Egyptian gods. They said, no, we're coming with you. It's the same thing all through these years. People have, have taken a hold of the tallit of a Jewish man and said, take me with you. I want to learn of your ways. Well, now we take his tallit. Yeah, I got to say this. I just got to say this. There's a lot of believers in uh, or Christian churches in America, I can say this because I'm an American, that will use the, the tools of Israel, but don't walk in the paths of Israel. They'll take the Tulit, um, uh, they will take the Sabbath candles, or they'll take the mezuzah, but they don't walk in the paths. They don't understand that they're grafted in that there, there's one family. By the way, Israel is the first family. It's the first nation of the kingdom of God. And you are part of his nation when you accept him and say, you are my Messiah. So I wanted to really clarify this tonight. When we are in covenant, we take on his ways and his past, Isaiah 2, 3. But I think... I think a lot of people, because of Hellenizing, uh, gotten off the path. 
and kind of put their own root system down, not the root system of the olive tree. And you must remember that when, um, uh, when Jonah, uh, no, I'm sorry, was in the ark, what was brought back to him? A branch of an olive tree, meaning no matter what, it is eternal. The olive tree represents the eternal life that we have in Yeshua, in Yeshua. So now what is all of this to be remembered so? Yes, it's the lighting of the lampstand, Yeshua, at the holy place. But it's also, it's also a story of the desecration of the temple by Antiochus uh, number four, a wicked, wicked uh, king that came in and conquered Israel. There's not much said about this, but it's in the book of Maccabees 1 and 2. And then Yeshua talks about, he goes up to the temple in John chapter 10, verse 22 and 23 and 24. And again, many of the, of the Christians in the church are never taught this because they just see the feast of dedication. But they just, uh, leaders just pass over it because it's not, a, it's not an American church thing. So they don't, and they don't know that they are to adhere to the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah. So Yeshua goes up to the temple for the dedication, which is called the Feast of Hanukkah. Why? Because he is the temple. He said, if you destroy this temple in three days, it will be raised up. So he was saying, listen, I am the temple. Those who believe in me will live in me. So now you have Antiochus destroying the temple and desecrating it. Now, I find this interesting too. A lot of people don't like to know about this. It even talks about pig's flesh and pig's blood uh, being an abomination to the altar. It's the worst, it's the worst. And that's what he did. He stopped the circumcision of the Jews. You cannot circumcise anymore. You cannot have Torah readings. You cannot do your sacrifices. Um, you cannot have Shabbat. Um, uh, and on and on and on he went, mainly to wipe out all, and I'm saying this, all of the Messiah's influence as king in the kingdom of God. Many of the Jews were afraid for their lives, and I understand that. But the culture of the Greek culture was so strong because it gave you pleasure of your flesh that they were saying, if, if you don't do, do a pig sacrifice and eat the pig's flesh, isn't that amazing? And here there's pig, pig, pig everywhere, but yet here it was an abomination, and it's, and it's still, to the Jews, to Yeshua would have never ate pig's flesh. Let me just put it there. He would have never ate it. Because why? He went up to the temple to celebrate the dedication when Judah the Maccabee took over and fought the huge army and won with a few good men and a few good women. I'm going to add the women in there. You can't not push aside the Deborahs in the kingdom. And so he goes in and he has to cleanse the temple because there's pig flesh and pig blood all over the altar. They had to redo an altar. Um, they found a cruise of oil. I know many believe that it was a miracle of eight days because it was only one day of cruise. I'm, I'm great with that, but I, I'm not sure if that's the whole emphasis of what Hanukkah is about. Um, I think it's more about the desecration of the temple. And Hellenizing was a wicked thing. Because the people said, well, if I become a little, little Greek-like, eh, it'll be okay. No, if I add a little bit of this, eh, I'll still be okay. But it was all about the house of the Lord. And even today in different countries in, in America, what do we think sometimes we're doing? You know, flashing lights. We have to have flashing lights. Of course we have to have flashing lights. And... Uh, sound equipment, which is unbelievable, um, stage presence. And the first time Noam, we spoke at many churches, but the first time we actually attended a church, it was a very large church. You were in one hour, not one hour. We were asked to go. And Noam being so innocent and so pure, coming from Jerusalem and so, so um, 
such a natural branch grafted into his own olive tree. Um, after the one hour service, he said, wow, beloved, that was real entertainment. He says, but what about the worship? Aren't we, aren't we gonna worship? Aren't we going to do what the Lord has called us to do, to lift up holy hands? And he was in shock. And I said, no, and, and then something was said, this is so important. This last week I said, you know, to my friends, the church uh, has gotten so far off the foundation in America that I'm talking with the brother, I'm not gonna tell you the country he's in, but he's a pastor and he said, you know, he said, Sister Deborah, I'm so grieved because when American pastors come in, they bring all of their stuff. And it's, and it's, we don't even see it in the word. We don't see it in the word. And so he really went through this time of repentance and I loved him for it. And I said, because it's Hanukkah, you don't want anything defiled. Um, in your temple that is not designated and ordained by the Lord from his word. So as the people were being Hellenized, the Lord always has the feast of the Lord, not only back then that we're going to keep on doing, but it's Akshav, that means a now. He's given us a now word for today during Hanukkah, and that is clean out your temple. And we now are the temple. We, we are also a temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and we're to let him come in and take out defilement that we have allowed to come in. But also, too, wherever we attend, is it holy unto the Lord? Um, is, is this edifying the Lord? Or is it edifying a singer? Or is it edifying only the pastor? Or is it edifying all the light show? We, I mean, we have to think of these things. So Paul talked about this, and he says in Romans 12, 2, we always use this, but we don't add this in on Hanukkah. And I really believe that Paul had something for us. He said, and do not be conformed, meaning don't be Hellenized, to this world. Now we live in the world, but we're not of the world. I think many times we forget that in our walk but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may, and how do we renew our mind? It's the word, the word. What's in the word? We adhere to the word. One time I was accused by this man who was a believer and he said, you're so obsessed with the word. I was in shock because he preached. And I said, wrap me up in it. Bind me up in the word. I will never be any other way but being obsessed with what the Lord has spoken to us as instructions in this word. Then it says that you may prove what is what is good. Whoa, there's discernment. Whoa, we. Okay, I just hit something. That's discernment. Because so many of this time during this Hanukkah, people don't know about it. Church doesn't know about it. Oh, they might have a little Hanukkah, but that's just cute. That's just another little decoration. But do you realize that many of us don't not know this, but we're eating off the tree of the good of knowledge and evil, but that we have the tree of life. But the Lord is saying, you will know what is good. You'll be able to discern between holy and unholy, between righteous and unrighteous, between unclean garments and the clean garment, between linen and wool. It's all there, it's all there. He's saying, but we can't be Hellenized. We can't bring the world into the church. We can't bring entertainment into the church. We can't bring words of the world into the church. So during this Hanukkah time, he's saying, you will then know the acceptable, perfect will of God. What is the perfect will of God? It's to follow in his ways. He says, Yeshua never missed the feast. Because why? He was the Messiah. He, he, he said, every feast, that is who I am. And I will teach you and instruct you. And not only that, some of the feast brings conviction because you will know, Lord, I, I, I pulled away. I'm back. I let this slide. I let that slide. So now he brings me this last week, which I haven't heard other people say, but I said to my friend, Terry, Terry, give me the, give me the scripture quick. I love people around me that can just look up things, you know, 
They can just look up an address in, in the Word of God. And I said about Ezekiel looking into the temple. Oh, it's Ezekiel 8. It goes on where literally, literally, the Lord picked up Ezekiel by his hair. Personally, I think some of us should be picked up by our hair. That's a little bit of Jewish. I think we should do that. And he brings him to the temple. And he said, dig into the wall, make a hole, and look at the abomination that is being done in my house. In my house. And it's not of me. I, I, I'm not called this to be. Then he says in verse 6, and you can, you can check this with me. It says, furthermore, and read in different translations, okay? It says, furthermore, he said to me, the Lord saying to Ezekiel, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel commits here to make me go far away from my sanctuary? Now turn again, you will see greater abominations. I tell you something, the fear of God kept me. I said, Lord, thank you. I would rather have the fear of God than the fear of man. And so this Hanukkah, where Yeshua walked into the temple, and it was his father's house, his father's house, and Yeshua is going to take us to his father's house. He said, I am the light of the world. He also said, don't hide your light. Don't hide your light. And even in the midst of that eternal light, that lamp that is within us, this during this lighting of the eight branch Hanukkah, every night your family and you can say, you know what, three, I want it to represent the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKadosh. The four, I, I want to thank the Lord that he has given me a spacious place from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. And we can go on. I want to thank the Lord. for We can just go down. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. During, and listen, if you do not have a Hanukkah, oh, 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 I am so good at this. Go to any of Michael's or any of the shops. And you know those candles that, that you can turn on underneath? Um, that has a battery in it, just start with the servant. Declare, Yeshua, you are the light of the world. You will disperse the darkness in my life. I don't want any defilement. Lord, I want to walk before you, holy Lord. I want to take your ways to me in the fear of the Lord. And then light, put that candle on, and you start, you start from the right as you face it from the right to the left, because that's how you read Hebrew. So I want to bless you with this word, but I want to encourage you with this word. It takes a few Maccabees to stand up and say, that's unacceptable. I will not take part with it because it is not to be in the house of the Lord. I bless you and I say to you, Hag Hanukkah Sameach. May the joy of the Lord be your strength.